Evercreech Junction, Somerset. It was to be the Clapham Junction of the West, the place where one line branched away to Bath and collared the Midland trade, and the main line ran to Highbridge and collared the coal from Cardiff. That Pickwickian figure in the frightful hat is, I'm sorry to say, me talking to the station master. But a station master's life, that's something worth living. And you can see why Evercreech Junction wins the prizes for flowers and tidiness. The level crossing gates are worked from the signal box. And here comes the 1232 from Sturminster Newton on her way to Bath, calling at Evercreech Junction, change for Glastonbury, Shatwick and stations to Highbridge. And as we say goodbye to the station master, please notice but on expenses, I'm travelling first. Forget motor cars. Get rid of anxiety. And here, to the rhythm of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. Dream again that ambitious Victorian dream which caused this long railway still to be running through deepest, quietest, flattest, remotest, least spoiled Somerset. This is the line we'll be travelling on. Once it was part of a grand scheme to unite Wales and the South West, and even to stretch to France. The scheme failed, and the main line went along there on the right to Bath and the Midlands. And here's our own bit of line, reduced to a branch, and even that has lost its twigs to wells and bridgewater. Great Western was the first friend the Somerset Central ever had. And it's the Somerset Central line we're traveling now. It's rather a relief to be drawn by steam through this uneventful countryside and just to hear the noises we knew as children. It's the sad road to the sea. West Pennard Station built of the local limestone. And one of the reasons why the Great Western liked this line a century ago was because it was also broad gauge, like the Great Western used to be. Oh, by the way, there's Glastonbury Tor, and how nice to see it without a foreground of villas and petrol stations. In a second or two, you'll find we come to a broad bridge, and as you look through it, you can see how the track was once broad for broad gauge. Glastonbury Station. I suppose the promoters of the Somerset and Dorset hoped that this place was going to become a vast industrial town. As the train, when it stops, waits here for two minutes, I always like to get out and have a look. There's always something to see in a railway station. Let's have a look at the waiting room. Gaslight. Solid furniture. Georgian tradition carried on into Victorian times. I say, I hope you're enjoying this journey as much as I am. You rarely see much more country once you've got out of the railway station from a train than ever you do from a motor car. 
no hoardings, no road signs, no lorries in front of you, and no neurotics hooting behind you. This is Sedgemoor. Do you remember Hardy's poem, The Tramp Woman's Tragedy? It's written to a sort of railway meter, and it fits here. From Wynyard's Gap, the live long day, the live long day, we beat afoot the northward way, we had travelled times before. The sun blaze burning on our backs, our shoulders sticking to our packs, by fossway fields and turnpike tracks, we skirted sad Sedgemoor. For months we padded side by side, I side by side, through the great forest, black moor wide, and where the parrot ran. We'd faced the gusts on Mendip Ridge, had crossed the Yeo, unhelped by bridge, been stung by every marshwood midge. I and my fancy man. This quiet part of Somerset has got its industries besides farming, cutting withies for basket making, and the railway carries a lot of the peat which is cut on Sedgemoor. The villages are a long way from the station. This is the village of Shapwick, grey limestone. I suppose they hoped there'd be houses all along the road from the village to the station two miles off. And at Eddington and Birtles, they built a railway hotel by the station. I suppose they thought you'd need a rest before the walk to the village. Go away, you brute, you enemy of railways and comfortable travel. You know, I'm not just being nostalgic and sentimental and unpractical about railways. Railways are bound to be used again. They're not a thing of the past and it's heartbreaking to see them left to rot and to see the fine men who serve them all their lives made uncertain about their own futures and about their jobs. What's more, it's wrong in every way when we all of us know that road traffic is becoming increasingly hellish on this overcrowded island and that in ten years from now there'll be three times as much traffic on English roads as there is today. What will the West Country be like then? How will we get anywhere in summer, except by railway? How will we see any country, except from a train? I think it's more than likely that we'll deeply regret the branch lines we've torn up and the lines that we've let to go to rot. I mean, even in America, they're already building new suburban railway lines. Here's Highbridge the end of the passenger line of the Somerset and Dorset. And so I suppose I'd better get out.